Available now on Blu-ray from Arrow Video is 1989 Anthony Perkins film entitled Edge of Sanity. This is, uh, it's a take on the Jekyll and Hyde, the Jekyll and Hyde story. And it is, it's, this is done a little bit differently. It's very 1988, released in 88. I originally saw this, it was a VHS release. It may have played theatrically in this country. If it was, it was pretty limited. I first knew it as a videotape release where you could get the R or unrated version. I think I remember renting the unrated version, which is what is presented here on the Arrow video release. Looks great, looks gorgeous, as Arrow stuff always does. And basically, Jekyll is this scientist in London back in the late 1800s, and he is he's experimenting with this white powder that when he when he takes this white powder, he becomes uh, very focused and very exhilarated. And that there's at one point uh, he's got a he's got a monkey in a cage in his lab, and the monkey knocks some kind of chemical over onto this powder, and it causes a gas. And when he breathes that in, it turns him into Mr. Hyde, basically. And it's very interesting the approach that the director took to this movie. A lot of it feels very contemporary, stylish, late '80s, intentionally. So when Hyde goes out on the stroll in you know let's say the Whitechapel area of London, um, the way he looks in his dress, he looks like a very 1988 LA club douche, basically. And a lot of the the prostitutes that are out look very 80s. Like one is dressed up essentially as the Madonna material girl or the, the early Madonna, the lucky star Madonna look and things like that. So the director intentionally is trying to blur the line between the where, when the film was shot and when the film was supposed to take place. And as Hyde goes out and does his dirty deeds, dirt cheap, he uh, comes across many people. He goes into this nightclub, which feels like it's something out of a Ken Russell movie. And it looks, everybody in it looks like it's 1988. And very, eventually where this movie goes is he starts murdering these prostitutes and doing, you know, despicable things to them and with them. And it he be, essentially becomes Jack the Ripper. So what you have, and I don't think this is the first time this has been done. I want to say Dr. Jekyll's sister Hyde sort of played with this idea too, where... Mr. Hyde is Jack the Ripper in this film. So you have the police on his case trying to figure out who's doing this and looking at Jekyll and all this other stuff. And really the movie is a, a parable for drug addiction. And the drugs that were the stylish or growing drugs that were on the scene in 1988. So you really have Mr. Hyde and, and the people he's hanging out with essentially freebasing this whatever it is that turns him into into Mr. Hyde and keeps him going as that character. So it's a super, it's very stylish, a lot of Dutch angles and colored light during the Mr. Hyde sequences. And very, it's kind of overlit. It's got that overlit late 80s, early 90s look that a lot of stuff did back then. And uh, very, trying to kind of look, it really blurs the line between when it's set and when it was shot. Um, very skeevy. It's a very sweaty, gaunt-looking Anthony Perkins in this. Um, I don't know how close this was to when he passed away. I want to say he passed away probably within a within a decade or less of of when this was shot. And it's it's just it's it's got a very and that's what I remembered from it is that it had a very kind of feel to it. Um, I didn't really care for it this time, mostly because of its aesthetics. I really didn't, for me, like that it looked like the late '80s when it was supposed to be set in the past knowing that that's what the character, the director was going for. Um, a lot of times Perkins feels like he's slipping into his character from Ken Russell's Crimes of Passion, sort of the perverted priest or whatever he was in that movie. Uh, it's, again, very sleazy, skeevy film. Very stylish. I know it's got a following, but I just personally really, I love Anthony Perkins and he's very good in this. And some of the performances are pretty good in this, but overall I didn't care for the way it felt. It felt very... It felt kind of Cinemax After Dark to me in some ways, just in terms of the production quality and things like that. Um, loaded with extras. Uh, if I didn't mention that before, loaded with nudity as well. This is the unrated version. So it's it's nudity, it's drugs, it's it's violence, it's it's everything that you want in an R-rated movie. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm kind of glancing over to my notes here. We have a commentary by the writers of the film. Uh, we have a commentary. What, what I wrote was commentary by... Uh, film writers. So I believe it was the writers of the film, but it's been a while since I've watched this and I don't have the notes in front of me. 
could have been somebody, people who wrote a, write about films. Uh, interview with the director discussing his career. Interview with uh, the producer, Stephen Thrower, who has written great film writer, uh, sort of as an introduction to the film. You've got uh, Dr. Claire Smith talking about Edge of Sanity in the context of cinematic descriptions of Jack the Ripper. That's really cool because essentially you get, it's a half hour it's essentially a history of Jack the Ripper on film. It's a history of Jack the Ripper and that whole scenario and also the film adaptations and what they've done with the character. And then you get to Edge of Sanity and she digs in on that. So that was really excellent. You get a trailer, which looked a little weird to me. It, it had like a weird frame rate. It made me wonder if it had been pulled off YouTube or something like that. But it's a very nice package for this film. Arrow always does a great job with these. If you're a fan of Edge of Sanity, as I often say, definitive presentation right here. If you're not a fan of Edge of Sanity and you like Anthony Perkins, it's worth a look. Or if you don't know, if you just love Anthony Perkins, it's worth a look for him because he really gives it everything he's got. And there are some, some fun stories in from the director and about leading up to the production of this film, dealing with Anthony Perkins and his approach to this whole thing. So a film that it was interesting for me to see again, I didn't really care for it personally, but it's an excellent addition uh, via Arrow Video, Edge of Sanity.